Episode 22, Fireside Chat with Blake Rice of The Blake Down, Part 1. Hey card fam, if you read the descriptions to the podcast episodes, you'll see that I wrote the following and I'm going to say it here too. This podcast episode and the next one simultaneously have been the best guest appearance I've had the pleasure of hosting, but also easily my most difficult podcast to host and record. I blame my guest 100%. (laughs) <laughs> but in a good way, and sorry, Blake, if you're listening to this, I don't mean blame in a bad way. I'm just joking. Um, but I found Blake's content through Instagram, and he exudes so much confidence and charm and positivity. And I knew all of that going into asking him to be a guest. And I felt like I prepared myself pretty well to have him on. That said, what I did not anticipate was that in talking to him, that his message and his energy would be so strong that I would break down a couple of times during this recording. And I really did contemplate editing this podcast, um, but I even kept the intro in where I just completely messed it up because he was making all these funny faces, um, which you would only be able to see with the YouTube link, which I will provide in the show notes here. But like he's like making these funny faces and I'm like looking up and he's not making the sounds. He's just making the faces. And I just, I just had to like restart. So anyway, I did get consent from his parents for this podcast and the video recording. And I know that as someone who does not want his own kids in, uh, you know, social media in my hobby page, you know, that this is super important. And this is something that I've done with my content in local card shows and local card shops. And I will continue to do so in the national and, you know, all my content going forward. Like, I just want to make that very clear Um, again, because I am just pretty sensitive to that. But going back to my intentional decision to not edit this podcast recording, I will just straight up say it again, uh, Blake's words, his story. I don't know. It just took me a second. It really took me by surprise. Even now, I'm kind of like uh, thinking back. I'm, I, I guess I'm getting a little bit flustered again. But I, I had to take a step back. Um, you'll 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 maybe hear some audible or I mean not audible pauses, but inaudible pauses. And yeah, if you've listened to me along the way um, so far, again, this is episode 22. I think you can tell that I am an emotive, passionate person, and I'll just go ahead and say this too. I think it's okay for boys and men to cry. When my kids do it, I don't tell them to stop crying and to be a man. And, you know, I'm I'm not saying that that works for everyone or that I'm trying to impose my family values on, you know, all of you, the listeners. But I'm just saying that in my household, in our household that we have here, uh, that, you know, that that's what we do. And, well, you know, it, it was real and it happens. So... Because I want to show that I'm not embarrassed by this and to show Blake that I'm not embarrassed by it, uh, to him especially, um, because I hope he listens to this. I mean, I don't know. I will say sometimes I've been on other episodes um, or even what am I trying to say? I've been a guest on other pods. It's hard for me to listen to myself, even for my own pod when I'm, you know, the only reason I listen to my own pod is to try to find good clips and reels. But otherwise, um, listening to myself to me is not very enjoyable. I hope it's enjoyable to you, but it's still something that I'm getting used to. So having said that, uh, I wanted to share with all of you kind of like the behind the scenes, uh, behind the, you know, the curtain, I made the conscious decision to not edit any part of this podcast, including the intro, the couple of times where his words just really hit home hard for me. Um, you know, you'll, you'll hear me talk about that. Um, I just want to kind of share that because, again, this is all the the hobby S. Thompson route where, yeah, I guess in this podcast journey, I'm just trying to share with you all just the intentional decisions that I make with the podcast. Um, so maybe you learn something from it. Okay, I'm just going to stop talking now because 
Uh, we're almost at the five minute mark. And I just want to get right into this episode. I think it's just fantastic. It is the best guest appearance, I think, on this podcast or any podcast content that I've listened to in the hobby, quite frankly. And it's not because of me. It's because of Blake. And it's because of his just personality. And so I hope you enjoy it. Let me know what you think. You know how to get a hold of me. Uh, so I'm just going to play the intro music now, or not the intro music, the little transition music that that's free on Spotify. I'm just going to play that little transition music and let you enjoy this episode. Thanks. All right, I think we're live. Welcome to the Car Diary. This is Denny Cards. <laughs> I'm gonna have to start over. I'm so sorry. Uh, you know what? I'll edit this out. Okay, I'll edit it out. Um, That's all right. Yeah, I I totally. Oh my goodness! Why am I being so flustered right now? Okay, here we go. Three. Wait, is this? Okay. Oh, that was the other thing. My audio. Okay, my microphone. Okay, I'm gonna do this so I know when to do the edit. Three, two, one. <clears throat> all right. I think we're live. Welcome to The Car Diary by Hobby S. Thompson. I am your host, Denny Cards. You can find me on Instagram at Denny underscore cards. And today we have a very special guest. Now, before I say his name and introduce uh, the listeners to him, I got to say, I had some notes on him. I wanted to have like this great grand intro. I just want to speak from the heart though, okay? Blake from the Blake Down, Blake Rice. He is one of the most wonderful, energetic, positive, charismatic kids that I have seen in not just in the hobby, but making content in social media. Um, it's clear to me that he is raised in a very loving, supportive family. And uh, I, I guess I got to say it in a really, uh, <laughs> in a really uh, simple way. I want to be Blake when I grow up. He, he has his own card in the Tufts, Alan and Ginter set. He has met some amazing athletes and celebrities. He, I think, is someone who people just really easily gravitate towards because he is just such a, um, a strong influence uh, of, of positive energy. And so I just wanted to say welcome to Blake Grice of The Blake Down to the podcast. Yahoo! It's a me! Yes, I love that. So you are a Mario fan then? I mean, you know, I've never really had a Nintendo Switch or anything, but I do have a Super Nintendo and a classical Nintendo in my room. That's fun. I love Mario. It's just, you know, it's just a good classical game that everybody loves. I mean, it's just enjoyable. You're telling me you have the norm, the 8-bit NES Nintendo and the Super Nintendo 16-bit in your in your house, and you play those games. Yes, that is sure. awesome. Those are the games that I grew up in. So, so uh, you are uh, the youngest guest ever. Uh, you are the eighth guest here, and by far you're the youngest. Um, you are. Can you tell us how old you are? I am eleven. You are eleven. So I am forty. So I have to go back twenty nine years to remember what it was like to be an eleven year old. But I will say, I think the cards is what makes me remember me being your age. <laughs> very good, very good. I mean, the hobby, you know, it's got some good memories in it. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, the, you know, one of the things that I like to do in this podcast is talk to people about their origin stories. And um, so I guess I got to ask you, what what does it feel like? The first question I have for you is, what does it feel like? Um, uh, no, that's not the way I wanted to ask it. And I'm not going to edit that out. My question to you is, do you remember what it was like to be a kid collecting in the hobby? Well, uh, you know, since uh, you know what? Since I'm already kind of a kid, I'm a I'm a think back like a year ago or something <laughs> like that. Uh, just just like that. That that'll work. That that'll work fine. Uh, about a year ago. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you know, collecting it was pretty fun, and it still is for me. Um, and you know, uh. 
like before I even started the breakdown, my brother and dad, especially my dad, were collecting cards. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I thought it was pretty cool. I'm like, whoa, look at that one. And, uh, you know, then I started my show and I started doing it myself. So, I mean, uh, you know, a year ago was probably around like the middle of the breakdown <laughs> from the start to right now. And, uh, you know, in the middle, it wasn't, it's actually, it was actually pretty good. I mean, uh, if I'm pretty sure like Mint Collective was around there, uh, All Star Game, that's kind of the middle. So, I mean, all, all of the stuff I did during that time was very fun. And I mean, uh, hobby's pretty cool. It is re- pretty cool. And you've had some amazing experiences uh, that I, you know, I, I even, I have not been to the Mint. So for you to be uh, having, for you have, gotten oh my gosh i cannot speak right now but for you to have gone to the mint uh and got to experience uh, the mint collective in vegas uh it's just truly awesome and um i do want to say i know uh, quite a bit about you through your dad we had a great co- conversation about you being on this he was very supportive of this happening um you are very excited to be here i'm very excited to have you here um i want to i want to shine a spotlight on collectors of all ages and uh, all types. So um, you are just, um, if people, I'm going to let you plug it multiple times, but your content on Instagram is just so wholesome. It's so wonderful. And you said you started the breakdown last year. Is that right? Um, No, last year was around the middle of it. I started it more like maybe two, three years ago. Oh, uh, around there, uh, it, 2021, I'm pretty sure. Got it. And, and you have not just an Instagram, uh, account for the breakdown, but you also have a podcast. Is that right? Yes. On YouTube, it's called Ginterviews and, yeah. uh, speak uh, pretty sure you mentioned at the start, my card. And, uh, since I'm in the Allen Ginter set, I thought, you know what? Let's interview everybody that's been in the Allen Ginter set from 2006 to now so now i'm kind of on a mission on my podcast to interview as many people in the alan ginter set as i can that is wonderful because i will say i i love doing research on the uh folks who are going to be guests on this podcast and i binged your content and i will say the fact that you were able to uh interview dr james andrews for a lot of us who know him when we see his name in like uh, news articles, like on ESPN about their favorite athletes going to him one, it's sad. Cause you know, he does surgery and he has to help them. Yeah. His, his surgery to help the pitchers. Exactly. And, and so many, you know, uh, basketball players, baseball players, football players. But the other thing is it's sad that they go to him, but they also, he's like a miracle worker. He, he brings people's careers back to life with his, uh, you know, like not maybe life-saving, but career saving surgeries. So for you to be able to interview him was is incredible. Yeah, I mean, he was a pretty nice guy and like you said, he's very important because if he was if he wasn't around, I mean, some of our like some people's favorite athletes might have not still been in the game, which is which is sad, but the thing is is that he's here and that is very good and now there's an actual procedure that can help everybody so even if he's not around somebody will still know how to do it oh my goodness you are you 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 are awesome you are totally awesome um you you have also been on other people's podcasts so uh you've been on with uh Dr. Jim Beckett and David Card David Adams Card World the Chase right so shout yeah, out to them yeah that was my last interview Wow, you you are making the rounds. I mean, I think I'm I'm so fortunate to have you because uh, uh, according to your dad, this might be your third interview, um, other than your own uh, podcast interviews and your uh, yeah, you know, um, Instagram content where you're interviewing people for like short form content. But I did want to have you on here to speak as a content creator. So, I mean, how are you able to do everything that you do? Because it really is just so impressive. It's wholesome. It's well edited. It's it's just authentic. It's so I think it's so sim- um. I, I hope, you know, I don't mean this in a bad way, but like simple, it's, it's pure. I think that's what I mean to say. It's pure and authentic. So can you uh, share with me and, and the listeners here? Um, what is your process when it comes to creating content? Well, when it comes to creating content, I just mostly want to be me. 
be myself. I mean, that's a thing I live by. Just be positive. Like, you can wake up one day. Don't think about all the things you might have to do that day, like a test or something, or uh, like anything negative that happened yesterday. Just think about, oh, wait, I can do this today. I think I have this today, and it's going to be really fun. Be positive. If you're not positive, you can't work because you can't work without positive energy. It keeps you going. And then you can just make as much content as you can. And when you're positive, people become positive like that watch you. So like I'm positive one day, people around me become positive. So that's what you have to do. And you just be yourself. I mean, don't be like, see somebody doing something. And then, you know, like, you know what, I'm going to do that. And you're just basically being a copycat. Be yourself. Make your own content. I do not like it when people just take it straight off from someone and literally steal their idea. Wow. I think I'm going to have to take the lessons from you because I will very much admit, I mean, I I do take from other people, but I do it in a fun way. You know, I imitate them or I paradise them, but it's mainly coming from a place of like love and, and, and like, you know, there's this thing called like imitation is the best form of flattery, but yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's the only exception for me. Like, as long as you, they're like, they're a fan, basically, not like a straight up giving no credit or anything. Cause as long as you like give credit or something, or at least just make fun out of it and not like completely copy it, just have the idea, it's, it's fine. You, you have such a clear view that I, I cannot wait to share this, uh, this guest chat out because I think a lot of people need to hear what you're saying. I really do. I think that, you know, there's that term. I don't know if you've heard it from the mouths of babes, you know, from the kids just have sometimes the best answers because they're just so clear. They cut through all the, the stuff that adults kind of have floating in their heads. And like what you're saying right now is just incredible. I really appreciate it. I really do. Yeah. And, uh, you know, like I said, waking up every morning, if you do have bad things to think about, just put them in the back of your mind. And once once it is time that, like, that happens, like a test, just prepare yourself, all right? Be ready and do your best. And, I mean, I mean, there's tons of students out there. I'm going into middle school, so I know what it's like. Uh, you know, just just stay calm. I mean... I, I just went to a program to show me around the school and stuff. It was a bit overwhelming because there were so many classes in so many different places. But at the end of the day, hey, I'm going to learn. I'm going to meet new people. It's going to be really fun. There's even a cooking class. I mean, it's awesome. And uh, you just got to believe yourself also. Not just be yourself. Believe in yourself. And uh, positive uh, energy. Believing in yourself and being yourself will just make you a pure content creator that's just honest just be honest with everything you have on your mind i mean we sh- we should be allowed to share everybody should be allowed to share their opinions and it's fine i mean if i say i like connor mcdavid which i really do and somebody says they like mckinnon which i also like uh but let's say like i i i only like the mcdavid just theoretically uh I mean, I would, I would be fine with that. That's their opinion. I'm not going to be like, oh, but McDavid's better because of this and that and that. Just, just let people have an opinion. Um, <laughs> I, I don't, I don't know if I'm going to edit this out. I have to think about it, but you're, um, you're, this is the first time I'm, I'm actually uh, getting a little bit choked up. Um, <laughs> believe in yourself. It's all right. <laughs> Thank you, Blake. It's just when you think about it, it's, it's, it's hard to take in because uh, sometimes stuff is hard. And uh, you just got to you – no, know, bro, if you need to let anything out, I'm fine. You, you, just, you just do what you need to do, all right? I, I need more Blake in my life, clearly. You know, I think what I think the the reason I'm um getting a little it's a little dusty in this uh 
basement podcast studio is uh you know you you really have this enthusiasm that my my boys have right i have two two boys they're eight and ten um it's really interesting because you're you're very much out there in social media and i made a promise to my to my wife their their mom that um we wouldn't put them on social media um so i really admire and and every family does what they think is best for their family so there's no one right way or wrong way um but for you to be out there and to be making content and and sharing all of this really wonderful positive energy is it, it really um it really is it's it's heartwarming it, it, it is heartwarming blake yeah um, do you want to okay. go on or? Yes, I know. Yes. Okay. Here's the thing. We're not, we, 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 I have you for a good bit here. Uh, let's get right to it. Um, I do, speaking of my kids, uh, I asked them, I told them that I was doing this with you and they are going to bed because they're a little bit younger than you and you're, you're in a, uh, earlier time, uh, uh, time zone. Yes. That's what I meant to say. Yeah. Um, too. but, uh, I have some questions for my boys. Uh, my 10 year old says, asks, who is your favorite current player? And who is your retired player? Oh, so uh, favorite current player, like any sport? Yeah, sure. Yeah, what's your favorite sport? Favorite sport, probably baseball. Okay. Uh, and uh, since it's baseball, let's do uh, my favorite baseball player. Yeah. Aaron Judge. Ah, okay. Good answer. And uh, do you have a favorite retired player, like someone – who you've heard about who you know used to play and you know your dad maybe likes or something like that uh probably pistol pete i mean he's not exactly retired but you know what i mean yeah okay <laughs> yeah so he are you talking about uh pete maravich yeah who, pete maravich yeah oh pistol wow pete, man he He's a he was a really good uh basketball player i i really i really liked his gameplay the dribbling, the the YouTube videos of him dribbling, it's really almost like a, uh, like he's like a magician with the ball, really ahead of his time, I think. Um, that's so cool. Um, uh, another question that my older son had was, uh, when did you start collecting and what got you into it? So I think you said maybe you started Blake down uh, three years ago, uh, or yeah, um, but could, yeah, when did you start collecting? What got you into it? Uh, so. Probably when I was about nine, I started it. And uh, like I said, 2021. Um, and the start, it, it, it started out kind of slow and stuff. I mean, I wasn't in nothing too big. But uh, now I'm starting to, you know, go uphill and uh, keep on going. Yeah. And, uh, you know, thing about Pete Maravich, I didn't really want to say it, but he, he's dead. But. I mean, the thing is, is that I just didn't really want to say it. Oh my gosh, you're you're adorable. Thank you. Um, I hope you don't take that as a offense. Um, you are a young, uh, a a very uh, polite young man. I will say that. Um, Thank so, you. so what got you into collecting cards? Um, well, I talked about this a little bit, but my dad and brother had been collecting yeah. and, uh, you know, I'd see people online. So, you know, I wanted for a while to have my own, uh, you know, social media. And, uh, you know, I think it just kind of worked out because, um, uh, I, I thought card collecting was cool. So I, I really thought, uh, like when I saw my dad and brother collecting, I saw yeah. these cool, shiny cards, aka refractors. <laughs> and I'm like, whoa. And there's, there were so many. I'm like, look at that one. And that one's so shiny. This one, this one's got a cool cut on it. I mean, like, I just thought it was the idea was so cool of these cards of my favorite sports players like being able to be handheld and just look at them and look how cool it is. I mean, collecting cards isn't just about all the money. Like, hey, dude, I got this $100 card. I don't I don't care as long as it looks good. I mean, if it looks good or if you it, – and it doesn't have to look good to somebody else. It has to be your opinion. If you like it, you keep it. And if somebody says, "Oh no, you should, you should put that over there or something," and don't don't think about that one, 
Think about it because it's yours. It is yours. And uh, I have to say one more thing. Uh, speaking of uh, my life and career and stuff, uh, <laughs> when I was born, I actually almost didn't make it. I was in the hospital for about a month. And, uh, you know, I don't, I don't, I, I, uh, Sorry, I, I'm kind of stuttering here. No, it's right. I do sure, not take don't every you, day yeah. for granted. I do not take it for granted. And I think of it as a gift because I am here and I'm talking to you right now. And I'm living a very good life. Again, just um, <laughs> take a second. I can't, I can't believe you're like consoling me. It's, uh, I, yeah, I'm going to have to think about whether I'm going to edit this out. Um, so my my uh thank you for that uh my second my my younger son who's eight asked wanted me to ask you do you collect pokemon cards and if so can we trade is this question um no you know i always uh want sometimes when i tell people that i collect cards sometimes some people think pokemon and you know i uh, i used to play pokemon go but uh i literally like ran out of like since I played Pokemon Go, you know how you have to like collect more Pokeballs at different locations. Well, that was kind of hard for me, uh, and I think it's kind of too much because there's there's places in my town that I just really don't want to go to. Like one of them is like this random like sh like wedding structure thing out in the middle of nowhere. Like I saw it one time. I'm like, I'm not going over there to get a Pokeball. I mean, just <laughs> the game is good, but the idea I'm 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 not driving five miles to somewhere just to get a super pokeball. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but oh, you thank know you. Yeah. since he did ask me that question, you know yeah. what? I'm a, I'm gonna send him some sport cards and maybe oh. he could send me like a couple Pokemon cards, like an actual trade. <sighs> Yeah, that that would be fantastic. And my older son does collect mostly basketball, uh, but he does collect his favorite players, Larry Bird, uh, the retired favorite player is Larry is Bird, good. and his favorite yeah. current player is Jason Tatum. And we live in the Washington D.C. area. We should be fans of the Wizards, but he just somehow really loves the Boston Celtics. I don't. Hey, understand. that that's fine. I mean, I support <laughs> the Rockies, yeah. but in reality, I kind of like the Yankees more. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't want anybody like, catching me red-handed. Oh, oh my god! My are actually kind of red, but cut, uh, yeah, you're not caught. Red. I will say this: <laughs> um, when it comes to the, um, you know, where you live in in the country, uh, your dad and I were talking about how you know it's okay to say that you're in Colorado, and um, I think I love your bio. It says Colorado, R A D in capital, like rad, Colorado. I think that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I, uh, you know, I just wanted to keep it kind of positive. And, you know, I, I, I have to say one thing about the Rockies. Now they might not play the best, but mm -hmm. I have to say, I don't know why some people say it's not, but I feel like the Colorado Rockies actually has one of the best city connect uniforms. Ooh, I yeah. mean, it's it's just really cool how they got the Rocky Mountains. It's it's just Let, awesome. So, um, the final thing my my older son says is have fun in the hobby. He says that to you, and he says that he's uh, you know that he's so he looks forward to watching or uh, listening to this uh, podcast. Wow. So I will say for the for the listeners um, because there's some people who are going to listen to just the audio and not watch the video because the, I'm, I optimize this podcast for audio is what I like to say, because that's what I love. I love listening to podcasts, not watching things on YouTube so much or not as much as, as how I should say. What I want to say to folks is who are listening is you have the uh, Rocky City Connect hat, right? That's on your head. You yeah. have a Colorado T-shirt, right? And I got to say, and I said this to your dad when I was watching your content, you were very emotive with your hands, your nonverbal, wow. your nonverbal communication exudes what's coming out of your mouth too it it, it accentuates it uh it accentuates the the positivity that you put out i think so i mean really yeah and you know what i like to do i like to be nice and animated when people see me but i also like to be animated in my voice <laughs> 
the world is your oyster, Blake. I feel like you have so many career paths you could go with. Uh, I feel like Dr. James Andrews is, is pulling you towards orthopedic surgeon, but like you, you have definitely, uh, I mean, I don't know if there's something you want to do, like, you know, I think a very easy question to ask uh, is like, you know, what do you would, what do you want to do when you grow up? So I don't know if you would like to answer that, but I just feel like. I, I can actually. Uh, yeah. Now, first of all, I, I had this little fact. I was just about to say, if you want to learn some fun facts, go to my channel. Yes. But uh, here's a little fun fact about him, actually. Uh, after the interview, I got a little picture printed out of me wearing an avalanche jersey and stuff. And he said he would put me on his wall with, like, Jordan and stuff. And I was like, <laughs> me? With, with Shaq? And, and he, I, I actually signed it and he put it on his wall. I am not kidding you. He is awesome, man. And, uh, you know, uh, where was I? Uh Brain fart. No, it's all right. Um, basically, <laughs> like asking about, you know, what. Uh, <laughs> see, now I'm. <laughs> I, 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 I am losing happened. control of this interview. Uh, not even an interview. It's a chat. It's a fireside chat. You are. That's what I like to think interviews as. Not like yeah. a more of like <laughs> meeting a new friend. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I I cannot wait for um my kids to meet you. And like I said, I want to be you when I grow up. You are. Just pure, uh, my gosh, you, you, you are, act, you're so, you're, this might be my favorite interview so far. Absolutely. Hands down. Nothing against my past interview, uh, guests or I can't, I, now I'm saying interview too much. Yeah. Same thing. Okay. Here's the thing. Um, I want to, I want to recenter us back. Okay. And for, forget the past question. Cause I can't even remember it anymore. I have in my notes, you have had the absolute awesome opportunity and pleasure of going through a uh, like photo shoot and getting your own uh, card made. Could you kind of tell us how that process was from beginning to end, whatever you want to share and anything you want to skip, please go ahead and skip. All right. So uh, when they let me get my own card uh, tops, they're, they're pretty cool, by the way. Uh, <laughs> they, they wanted to have some of my t-shirts and uh, you know what? I gave them to him. And, uh, you know, first time I got one of my relic cards with my little jersey patch, I was like, this is awesome. I really, I like refractors, but I also like relics with uh, the jerseys in them because I don't know why, but my my little monkey brain just loves to <laughs> rub the jersey. <laughs> I don't know why. I'm just like, <laughs> it's oh like it's like goodness. alien technology to me i'm like Clear, you must be playing sweat some, he wore you are so wear you, sweat. you must you must be playing some donkey kong to to know those those noises too is that is that right you're playing like super, i think uh, donkey kong oh that might have been like donkey kong 64 I've, I've, maybe played, I've played the classic donkey kong uh where mario like goes up the ladders and stuff yeah. to um forgot her name <laughs> uh yeah princess peach or something like that yeah, i think or, it was princess peach yeah yeah fun fact uh yes did you know in that original game he that's the first time mario actually appeared and his original name wasn't mario it was actually jump man yes i uh i, I am a former video game nerd and um i knew that fact but for you to know that at age 11 is is incredible because i think there are some people my age and older who do not know that fact that is very cool so yeah. I, so i gotta ask you like um who you <laughs> you are this wonderful ball of energy can i ask you who are you more like are you more like your mom or your dad uh well genetically i'm probably <laughs> more like my mom uh because we're both blonde uh we both like animals uh <laughs> i well my dad loves animals too but uh, -huh. uh i don't know why but 
I don't know, man. I feel like I'm just genetically more like my mom, but mentally I'm kind of more like my dad. Okay. Okay. Good answer. Good answer. All right. So the premise of this um, podcast is, is this, you know, the card diary by hobby S Thompson comes from this book called the rum diary by Hunter S Thompson. And Hunter S Thompson was a guy who liked to do a lot of different things and report about it. And so, I know you like to do a lot of different things and report about them too. Like it's almost like you, you gotta be like the next kid reporter. I feel like, but um, you, your dad told me like, you're like a huge world war two history buff. Is that right? Yes. Very true. Would you like to hear anything? As, as however much. 